And I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, went a little longer than I thought. It's but good. it's uh, it's all good. It's all part of the story. It's part of the journey. Yes. We are Frodo the... took a long time to get the ring to where he needed to be. This is all true. All right, and in the end, he couldn't even do it. I, <laughs> yeah. Frodo. So everyone's having a good time. I don't mean to, Mr. Frodo, he'd say. I don't mean right. to. No, that's what Sam would say. Uh, yes, we're, we're back. We've done it. Uh, Bo is back. We're all back. John's static photo of himself is back. We're ready to roll. Let's do it. All right. So the elevator begins to descend. Tickles has jumped from the... the no! Tickles! Uh, but you don't see anything from above in the hole, but apparently the dwarves can see you, and the, the elevator begins descending. Nash, it's your turn. Okay. Um... Hang on, I'm looking at my little layout here. Things have gotten weird. Is that a rat over there? That's the dog. Oh, that's the dog. It's the human dog. It's a human. So it's a human. He's got like these leather black pants on, but bare feet. His chest is, you know, bare. He's got a metal helmet on his head. It's circular, like a spherical dome. There's these little slits where its eyes are and nose, but the mouth part is open. All right. And he's going. Rawr, rawr, rawr. <laughs> but he's still a person. Right? Yeah, it's a human. It's yeah. a human. He's a crazy human. Okay. Um. Well, I'm running out of spells here. Uh, I've only used one. That's true. Everything else has been cantrips. You're right. Yeah. Uh, in that case, guy right next to me. Zambi Excuse right me, there. Sorry. No, you're, you're totally fine. <laughs> The zombie right next to me needs to have uh, needs to deal with a little bit of love for me, so I'm going to acid splash in his direction. All right, that's a 13 Constitution save. Yep. Uh, okay, do your damage. Okay, my damage will be four. Four. Okay, you do four points of damage to it. It splashes. Its skin bubbling. It's already sustained quite a bit of damage. Its body's mangled as shoulders sink down and its arms drop to like its waist and it's like very malformed now it's just like this giant sort of neck on it because it's shoulders have been melted down okay <laughs> uh, and uh, I and I go <laughs> take that and then I'm done and then my roll my turn is done all right hope your turn um okay does it look like there are gonna be zombies? Jumping on as we descend. Yeah, there's no the, uh, the sound in echoing through the shaft is not quieted one bit. In fact, it feels louder than ever. All right, I'm gonna walk over to, to Tickles. I'm gonna go to the square right in front of him. Okay. I'm gonna you know offer the back of my hand so you can sniff it. Okay. <laughs> Okay, and then, uh, um, that's so far a free action to just put your hand out, but anything okay. more is going to cost you the action. Oh, okay, gotcha. Um, and then I'll use Thaumaturgy to make my voice boom three times louder so they can hear me up there. Mm -hmm. And I'll go, it looks like we have Tickles. He's all right, but he won't be if you keep us going down. All right, persuasion check, please. You know what? I'm going to use my inspiration for this. Okay. I rolled the same number. So, here we are with a persuasion of 11. Okay. So your voice booms as you yell this out. And this is a loud cries. It echoes up and you know that it's made its way to the top. And um, you don't hear anything in response. I'll pat Tickles on the back. And I'll turn to face the zombies. <laughs> All right, Stanley, your turn. Well, it worked so well before. Why don't we try hucking another zombie over the edge? All right, strength contest. Let's do this. I rolled a natural 20. <laughs> okay. Uh, how do you throw it over? Or is it DM's choice again? <laughs> I'm going to... Uh, Grab him by the back of the neck and uh, whatever remains of, you know, where his belt would be and just hoist him over. Down he goes. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> I like how you rolled a 20. It's like, oh, I threw him over. Uh, you throw him over with such strength that it, he fires up against the wall and splats and hangs there for a brief second before peeling off <laughs> and falling to the ground. Okay. Um, <laughs> then from my movement, uh, I is this Stargate looking thing the controls for the elevator? Yeah, you have you have a look over there, and it, it, there's uh, some sticks and some buttons on this console. I'm gonna go over there and All check right. it out. Uh, to the corner or to the ear? Uh, let's go all the way to the corner. All right. You move to the corner and you, you look at the console in front of you. But you've used your action. Yep. So you're just hunkered down over there. All right. Um, was this console here. there? Was this console there the whole time, by the way? It's always it, there. It was. Yeah. Shit. All right. I have a feeling. <laughs> <laughs> I have you've been a feeling. busy. You've been busy. Well, yeah, it, but I have a feeling that... Your <laughs> we may have ignored a thing that would have helped us earlier, but anyway. Uh, Varel, it's your turn. All right. More flames erupt from me in a... All right. So the race about attacking five zombies. I love the appearance of this sterile with this return. All right. Fail, 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 fail. Uh, and it's a con, right? Yeah. So um, one of them resists. Again, two more damage fly out uh, to the zombies. I don't know if you can see. I'm updating the damage they've taken. I don't know if you can click on the units or not. No, they're under okay. your control. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I'm, I'm marking damage on them. Maybe it'll be interesting to see if that's something we can get everyone to see. Yeah. Um, uh, so they the flame jets out whoosh, and again, searing the front. And many of these zombies, their fronts are now starting to melt and droop down. Uh, you know, like their, their chest, like their, their nipples are like down out of their stomach as their flesh just melts down. Like my grandma. <laughs> All right. The flames. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, continue on, Varel. Cool. I've got my axe embedded in this resilient one's side, and I'm going to use my bite attack to go to the other side and kind of... That's well, the one you've been you've been continuing to hammer, right? The one that right, and it yeah. recently last round stood up and got all resilient in my face. Yeah, okay, another one. Cool. All right, I'm gonna bite him, and this will be reckless. Okay. All right, a nineteen hit. Hit. Or four points of damage. Okay. Again, you bite it, and your teeth sink deep into it. And as you chomp down, blood just, this is sort of spray of blood this way, just comes out, and you struggle with it, and then it pulls off. The spinal cord sort of rips out from the back, and the up lower torso falls out, and the, the body goes limp in your mouth. It tastes terrible. You expect the humans to taste good, but this is some kind of disease corrupted thing and it's it's foul and you're it's like eating raw ch raw salmonella chicken it's just disgusting well this isn't my bonus action hungry jaws so i'm not swallowing for hit points i am nope just biting so yeah taste you're just is biting there, but not yeah. ingesting. Yeah. and you uh you rip it in two with your mouth and you have this just blood dripping and the corpse is still hanging there unless you choose to let it go oh i will keep a spine hanging out of my mouth as i turn around with my axe as he falls down in my hand, ready for the next one. Okay. You've got a corpse in your mouth. <laughs> the upper torso of a corpse in your mouth. What tastes worse, uh, that or the wall of a carcass? Uh, if, you'd, if you were to decide what Varel likes the taste worse of, the wall of a nasty carcass in the middle of a sandstorm or a undead guy? Oh, no, that's right. I have rations hanging off my, my bandoliers, and they're all covered in goop now. Yep. A little extra flavor yeah. for the so tickles the human dog that uh, goes ruff, 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 and and he runs over to you nash and you're facing the zombie in front of you fighting but you feel this little <laughs> sort of sniffing around the back of your legs <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> as he as he sniffs around your butt um all right uh, the floor uh, the elevator begins descending rapidly as it loosens and the chains like <laughs> moves down to the seventh floor. The zombies around you, uh, Varel, take their, uh, again, continue to attempt to hit you and bite you and sink their claws into you. All but one misses. 
uh, deals ooh, seven points of damage. Some, some pretty rough roll. Um, and uh, what are the zombies are left? There is one. This is the one with the big boogers in her face. Comes towards Hope, turns around, and it doesn't talk. It's like just a bubble <laughs> growing out of her face. Makes an attack, misses at you. Nash, the one next to you, goes to swing at you. Uh, hits you critically. This this thing jumps at you unexpectedly. Suddenly, you take eight points of damage as it just uh, just sinks its fingers into your chest as if to try and take out your sweet succulent flesh uh, for its delicious dinner. And um, this hurts. Okay, how many points? Uh, Sorry, eighteen. I think 18? that's it for zombies on the thing. Um, but then, uh, as it begins to descend, this cries and the begin to increase in zombie yeah. sorry what was my damage eight points of damage sorry it cut out all right eight i got it all sorry right. go ahead uh, and um oops let me just make sure these things don't have little marks on them don't forget scott you should have had five temporary hit points to help cut through that oh right so actually hold on all right i don't know i can't remove the mark from this guy for some reason so we're gonna go five additional oh. Wait, that's not right. Oh, override max HP, five. Oh. And it begins raining corpses down on top of you. Let me just, uh... Sorry. This... Uh-oh. I opened up the developer console. Nobody wants that. As more zombies begin to fall and it begins to rain down, holy hell. So many zombies start just pouring out all of the sides and filling up. <laughs> filling, they're falling They're falling on top of each other. And zombies, and, and tons of zombies fall down on top of one another and start filling it up. And the elevator begins to buckle under the weight. And the chain, you hear this fraying on the chain to the right. <laughs> All right, Varel, it, or sorry, Nash, it's your turn. All right, I think I broke something. So just boosh, boosh, boosh. I broke something where? In the, I added an override max HP modifier, but it- No, you oh. should have put it in the temporary hit point. Yeah, and I can't get rid of it. There we go. All right, so temporary hit points are gonna be five. But I mean, you could have just subtracted- You can just subtract them. You actually have to subtract your temporary hit points first. Oh, okay, so, so that's loses that five plus... You're at 21 minus three, I think. So it's just three. Right? Yeah, damage three. Yeah, okay. You just lose three from your... I oh. figured it out. All right, I'm at 23. Right. So while that was happening, the, the sky begins to get just peppered with corpses as more and more zombies fall down. There's raining all around you. There's corpses falling now on the side of the elevator as it starts to run, uh, run down, and the elevator buckles under the weight. Uh, Nash, it's your turn. Okay. Um, don't like this at all. Are the ones that are falling? Are they? We're not putting them on the board, but they're. Are they capable? They're there. What's that? Where? Oh, did you put them on? I did. Yes, they're oh. all there. Okay, I don't see them for some reason. Oh, oh I had to refresh it. it. Good lord! <laughs> <laughs> the last I checked it, they weren't there. And now they're every freaking where. Okay. <laughs> that really freaked me out. All right. Because um, it was almost blank before, and I was like, what are you talking about? All right. Um, oh, geez. Okay, give me one sec here. I'm going to, I think we need to do something crazy. Um, okay, let me see. Yeah, we do. Uh, okay. I don't know what to do. Um, I'm going to do another Thunder Wave. This will expel that slot, but uh, I like what it did before, and I will spend another one of my points so I can keep people safe up to three of them. Okay. Um, which means... Let's see. Let me figure out what the radius... Can you do another radius box? Oh, you did. It's already there. Yeah, it's still there, actually. Okay, so... So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Mm-hmm. You're gonna hit 13 zombies. Okay. Um, now you have three friend, two friendlies within range. Yeah. If tickles counts as a friendly, I'll count him as a 
friendly. Wait, where's Stanley? Oh, he's the, the deal. Okay, yeah, we'll count him as a friendly. Okay. Um, so I have to make 13 saves? Yes. Versus... Oh, you're asking constitution, me? It's Constitution 30. Okay. All right, here here it goes. You guys ready for this? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> you uh, Okay. Um, so it's versus thirteen, and it's a Constitution save, right? Yeah. So let's see here what I got. Um, save, 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 save. Four of them save. Okay. All right, four of them save. Uh, all right. So let's get the ones that are pushed. We don't have to roll damage dice for them. Okay. So, what t tell me, describe your spell. Same as last time. Staff in the air. Hand in the air. Eye glows bright red. And I go, for the Russinante! These are all things I've read. <laughs> I've read this all in books. Remember, I don't... I got I, that. Yeah. <laughs> I got that reference. So, one, two, three. And then, boom! So, so boom. Uh bunch of zombies over here fly off the side. So this guy flies that way as well. This guy as well. You just clear off the, the, the table. Uh, ten. They said four were unaffected. One, two, three. Oh, we have to bring one. Oh, no, there's four. Okay, so there are four zombies that you're going to have to roll damage dice for. Okay, got it. Uh, 2d8. Two two yep, first set, 12. Mm-hmm. Uh, second set. All right, this guy, this guy disintegrates the one right in front of you. Just... It doesn't knock him off, but his corpse just obliterates. Okay. Second set. All right. Second set is six. Mm-hmm. Uh, third is six also. Mm-hmm. Uh, ten for the next. All right. Perfect. So, uh, oh, that's half. i got to put mark for half. Sorry. Oh, yeah. They get half the damage. Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, so that means you've cleared off uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight zombies and disintegrated a ninth one. As and I go, giant loud echo just bursts through the shaft. Um, <laughs> but it also hits the elevator. Oh no. It drops again. Everyone make a deck save. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, remember this? <laughs> 17. Seven. Okay. Uh, One natural, point higher than last time. Natural 20 for 26 total. And Nash, Eight, save. 18. 18. All right, so Hope, you fall prone. Again. And um, this time, when it, this time it falls. It falls a floor. You move down to the eighth. It falls a floor, and the chain on the bottom side of what you're looking at here snaps. <laughs> Bing! And you just you see chain. <laughs> as it's, it begins to free fall, and the elevator dips down in a 45-degree angle. <laughs> And everything begins sliding. So hope because you've fallen prone, you slide twenty feet down that way. Uh, Stanley, you grip on tight. Having saved your Dex, Varel, you uh, hunch on down and don't move. Nash, you're okay as well. The zombies begin to tumble off. <sighs> the corpses too, as they move twenty feet. Uh, the zombies just sort of just tumble on down off the side here. Uh, they move 20. Um, this one uh, bumps into you. You sort of sidestep it. It falls down as well, the one that's next to you. Stanley, this one also falls past you as you let it slide, uh, moving everything four squares down. Um, oh, Tickles has to roll a safe. Uh -oh. No Tickles. <laughs> he, he's not very dexterous, and he, fall, and he slides <laughs> down next to Morel. Uh, <laughs> um, this corpse moves. This corpse as well slides down. One, two, three, four. Four, one, two, three, four. Now it's on a forty-five degree angle, so everyone's kind of like bent up a bit to compensate for their weight, except for Hope, who's fully prone, and you're just sliding down uh, <laughs> on your way down. Um, it, the, it's now difficult terrain. Your movement speeds are cost double, and um, any you know, it's it's very it's a difficult uh, surface now to climb because it's on an angle. All right, a uh, bunch of zombies fly off and the chain, and now uh, the elevator begins descending even quicker, and you see floors whip past you as the elevator starts to fly down. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, there's a zombie next to you, Nash, that sees you, and, and on its way down, tumbling down, it 
lunges at you and tries to make a wild swing with disadvantage. Doesn't hit you. This one uh, doesn't. And the rest of the zombies are too out of control to do anything. Um, Varel, one of them does try, try to take a swipe at you as it swings by. It does connect. It does. Jeez, this dice. Seven points of damage as it uses the momentum of falling forward to just bump into you and sink its claws deep into you. And it's got its face in your face, in one of your eyeballs, because you still have a corpse in your mouth. You haven't let it go yet. Um, it's like, ah! Nash, your turn. Man, back to me already? Uh, yeah. Um, okay. Huh. So this whole thing is sloped down. And we have half movement speed. I have two it's zombies. sloped down on a 45 degree angle towards the bottom. This is so much better now that I can visualize it. Um, we get an opportunity. Is, is the guy next to me prone from the from the slam or no? Uh, no. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, we need to keep removing people, and if I run, I'll get an opportunity to hit, so I'm going to splash acid in his face. Can't. Okay, that's a saving throw for con 13, right? Mm -hmm. Or dex. Dex 13? Yep. Uh, miss? Fail, I mean? Okay. Um, 10? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, I'm sorry, 10. I hit for 10. 10 points of damage? That's not right. Hold on, wrong dice. Sorry. <laughs> doesn't sound right. This doesn't look right at all. Wait, this are, these are D6, aren't they? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Four? Four. Okay, perfect. I'll mark four on it. Uh, so you shoot the acid uh, at it, and um, it melts its face. And in response, it goes, Ehh. <laughs> Oh, that old, <laughs> that old chestnut. All right. Cool. Um, I will... He's still with us, though. So I'm going to stay there and end my turn. Okay. Uh, hope. All right. I'm going to try and shimmy myself over to the side so I can grab onto something. Okay. So you're, you're going to move prone over here like that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's, there's a railing there available for grabbing. Perfect. And then what I'll do is kind of, if I can shimmy down as well and see if I can reach out to Varel just in case. Okay, so you used half your movement speed, or you used 10 feet. This is feet. This okay. is 30 feet as you shimmy yourself. That's your full movement. Okay, perfect. Okay. Um, you, can, you can make attacks from prone. I don't know if that's something you wanted to do or not. Not really. I just want to hold on and stay okay. attached. Okay, do you want to ready in action since you're not taking one? Um, I'll ready my free arm in case Pharrell wants, needs to grab onto something. Okay, you're going to be ready to catch him. Yeah, uh, yeah. And if not him, the accidents. dog. Okay, uh, Stanley, your turn. <laughs> and if not him, the dog. <laughs> so Stanley, oh, you're leaning okay. up against the railing, secure, because you rolled a pretty, you rolled a crit, I think, on a dex. Or 20. Yeah. You're, so you're there, you're sort of uh, supported by the railing, you weren't affected by the momentum because you're on the very end and tumble down. Uh, you've got a secure grip. There's a chain <laughs> flying, like it's, it's near your head where that chain is. Uh, very loose. Uh, Alright. Let's let's help this guy get over the railing. Okay, use 10 feet of movement to move over, and we're going to do a strength uh, contest. Yeah. Okay. Uh, mine was 16. You win. All right, so you pick him up again by the shoulder, one hand on the crotch, fling him over, <laughs> and just right along the side, right over the side. <laughs> Nice work. Uh, He's gone. And he goes, <laughs> Oh, I was having so much fun. <laughs> and then I am going to uh, once again have my eyes flare silver and uh, repeat the phrase, Ali Torish Ya Taldin. Mm -hmm. And everybody gains 
five temporary hit points and can move if they want to use their reaction. Now, in this precarious situation, I should be clear, this uses your reaction for the turn if you decide to move. Okay. Does anyone want to move? Um, I do. But you won't take an opportunity attack, so... I don't, but, I, but I still can only move at, uh, half distance, right, Bo? It's double cost on move. Yeah, movement. but you can move the five feet. It is double costed. Okay. Um, but so, I'll allow the five feet movement. So everything... It might circumvent that, too. Let's see. That's five. So that's ten. So if I move ten, that's normally twenty. So You can't, you can't move ten. You can only move five. Like, I, the spell that Stanley cast only allows you five. All right, I want to move there. Okay. Thank you. Got it. All right. Any other movements? Make sure to mark down your five temporary hit points. And um, oh. that's everything. Varel's next. Cool. I will, as I see the zombie sliding down towards me, I will drop my mouthful of spine and, okay. you know, kind of. Uh, it falls down and slides towards the side and then off. And like off a. The side of the thing. Uh, the the crocodile and Captain Hook. I'll open my mouth and bite him as he slides into me. Uh, <laughs> which one sliding into you? The one that slammed into my face. Uh, oh, he, he he fell past you. He fell past. Oh, you. he just kept on rolling. Yeah, the one here. That's the dog. The dog is now next to you. You can you can do that to the dog if you'd like. <laughs> oh no no, there's a there's a zombie right next to me, right? Yeah yeah. He yeah. Cool. He, I mean, he has momentum down. He's just not. You can't catch him because he's already sort of past you a little. Bit. I get you. Although I guess you can kind of do a. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm gonna do hungry jaws on him, and this is the, okay. the swallow because I am, at, I'm very bloodied. Okay, this will be a reckless attack, but it's a bonus action. Uh, Eleven. Okay. Yep, you're successful. Eight points of damage to him. Okay. So you bite him. Uh, you bite him, and you get him. You you. You swallow what you bite, right? Yeah. Yeah, so you take a chomp out of him. So now there's this big chomp mark where you, you your arm, his arm, and part of his torso, uh, you've chomped completely off. And it's like string cheese, this red sort of black blood string as you pull away with the part that you've secured for yourself and swallow the zombie corpse uh, whole, like that part of it. <laughs> he's got this big bite Ugh. mark out of like his side right here <laughs> where he's been chomped. Ooh. Awesome. All right, that was bones and like lung and just like uh, heart pumping. There's a little heart artery go. <laughs> awesome. That was for the health. So I gained three temporary hit points off of that. And I'd like mm -hmm. to Almost like I'm, I'm kissing him deeply. I've bitten him like vampire style, and I just want to chuck him off. I'm done with him. Love and it. Okay. Throw him you, you take him like one hand style or two hands. Yeah. Just... Well, I've got. I figure this is grating, right? So I got one yeah. hand. Kind of, my my lizard claw dug through the cracks, the uh, mm. the great holes. So I'm holding on tight there, and the other arm just give it a throw. Love it. All right, strength contest. I get advantage on all strengths while raging, and it's twenty, not natural. All right, you take the corpse and you grab it deep in flesh and blood. It's like squeezing a sponge, but you grab a firm grip of it and rip them and throw them out. And there's this big arc of blood that shoots into the air. And you fling them out and it hits the wall. And as it hits the wall, the legs pop out of the sockets. Because uh, you throw with such horrors. And then these three pieces just sprinkle down. And you hear, uh, as the zombie uh, falls uh, down below. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else would you like to do with your turn? Visual. That was my bonus. That Sounds was good. my, uh, and action I'm not moving sure. because I'm holding on tight. So okay, action so bonus. That guy's, that guy's deceased. Okay. Um, well, that's everyone's turn. Um, the uh, the elevator descends at an accelerated rate. You see the floor is going by 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. They're just flying on down as you're nearly in free fall and everyone starts lifting off the top of everyone. Everyone's, you're now just like hovering a little bit as you start to enter into free fall as the elevator descends quicker than you do. 
and then zombies still haven't stopped falling. So as, as you've cleared off the floor, more zombies just shoot past you because you're starting to lift off and they hit the side of the elevator and they explode. They st- these parts start flying everywhere, but some of the zombies are now floating in the air. And um, so, yeah, we're now in free fall, everyone. <laughs> Good Lord. Uh, are we all doing so, that? Are some, we all hovering kind of above the... You're all in free fall. You can see below you, like about a foot below you, there's the elevator, and it's just within reach. Uh, but um, you are in free fall. Now, I'm still I, onto it, for yeah. what's worth. So just, to, I mean, you can still see the thing there. There are now zombies in free fall alongside you, new ones that have fallen down. Uh, and you can see them, actually, just let's spread them out a little bit here. Um, you can see them free falling alongside you. Uh, now, if anyone wants to take a reaction at this point to grab onto a railing, they can. Or they can I choose will do that. Too. I'll grab the railing. Okay. Can I do that, or I need to wait for a turn to move? Don't I? You're, you're, you weren't near a railing. It's anyone near a railing within, within a five feet? Yeah, right? I'm not. I'm, not I'm still them. holding on. Okay, so you're still holding on. So you're actually moving. Even faster than the other two. Oh, so Var- no. Varel, Varel and Nash are starting to float off the top. Well, I've got my hand through the grating at that, so if I'm kind of diving yeah. hand first. Now, we're not really in combat turns anymore. Um, if people want to decide what sort of actions they want to take uh, as quick reactions, we can do that. I got one. Um, mm-hmm. I notice that I'm floating and I go, No! I grab my staff, I whip it around, and I put the end with the nail down to the grate is there okay. is there is there a grating to this thing because visually yeah, it's there got is. like a, it's got like a metal grate like if you picture sort of industrial fright thing where it's 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 see-through right like it's a it's right. grated yeah is it big enough for me to jam my my nail and staff through one of the holes and then hook it and hold you could it probably hook it in and like a and wedge it that's what i want to do so i don't that's my whole that's my railing since i'm not near one okay acrobatics check for this finesse move all right have no bonuses to that, so this will be fun. Um, shit. One. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you go to lift it up and go to take like a nice little hook of it, and whoosh, the staff falls out of your hand. No! Yeah. No, no, yeah. no! Wait, wait, you're not saying it's like gone. But you're it's above you and it falls at a slower pace than you do but it's right near you right now but it's fallen out of your hand shit all right i guess that's my i mean can i grab it this isn't a move right or am i still in a well that's that's just what happened we're not doing turns so much so yeah there's a possibility that you could grab it but you can't move up you're moving down uncontrollably well i reach so up to you, grab you, it. you turn around you look up and you see it's like right there and you're like <laughs> yeah i fumble for it can i touch it can i touch it or i can't touch it well you can't reach it oh you're shit faster. you're falling faster than it all right i i see that i reach for it i look at it desperately and then i relax and say it's come to this and that's it okay i don't all know right, what else to do anyone else have any actions they want to queue up I'm gonna try and get over to where Stanley is with that thing, the uh, the panel. Okay, so movement is extremely difficult uh, okay. across there. Um, you're gonna try and get to the panel, so um, uh, roll a acrobatics check to try and, you're gonna have to hold on to the elevator or else it's gonna fly out from underneath you. Okay. It's pulling you down faster than you're falling. Uh, nine. Okay. So you go to make an attempt to to make your way across by grabbing onto it, and as soon as you let your grip go of the bar, you let up and it starts to fall faster underneath you. It's about two feet away now as it, it descends faster and faster. <laughs> and the floors are going by. You catch a quick you catch a quick glimpse and you see floor uh, seventy eight fly by. You just notice a quick sign. Oh, but there are nine hundred ninety nine floors. Yeah, we got a long way to go. It's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> and as you, as you continue falling, you start to notice that there are less passages and it's more shaft. It's just like there are less openings in the side, less places to stop, and the hole just keeps going down. So and and our... there's no sources of light anymore except for Varel, who's glowing as he falls because the flame war is still still going. 
Is there nobody who, be, besides me that's actually still holding onto the elevator? Yep, you look above I'm on and the you grating. See... Yeah. I've still got my fingers oh, through that grating. Yeah, it's you and Varel on the uh, grating. Is the zombie across from me? And to actually, the, the way you're holding it, Stanley, is your legs are starting to fly up. Unless you've hooked your legs into to it. <laughs> no, right now it's probably just the hand. Okay, so you're kind of holding onto it and your legs are starting to like fly up uncontrollably. <laughs> Are any of the uh, zombies holding on to the elevator? No, there's zombies floating all around you. So, uh, picture just they're just like ah, and they try to reach out to you, but they can't move in the air. Everyone's stuck falling above you. You look up and you see zombies falling down at you. Uh, you look below and you see the falling zombies that are sort of in your cadre of falling. Um, within your periphery, there's maybe thirty or forty zombies all around you. I'm gonna just shout and and. To Varel, and I'm gonna just say, Varel, let go, and I'm gonna let go of the railing. Okay, you let go. This is gonna be one of those. If you let, you think holding on is gonna save you, but letting go is what you need to do. No. Oh. <laughs> Life lesson. It, yeah, it, it echoes through my head. Let go, let go, let go. Uh, I don't. I don't receive damage. I don't deal damage. So my rage fades, and the voice comes to me, and, I, and I'm still. You know, I work my other hand onto it, kind of diving with the board, the uh, elevator. And what? Where are we? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> so you're continuing to hold on even more. Yes. <laughs> nice. Nice pump fake. Um, I'm gonna send out a mental thought to whatever demon is at the bottom of this thing. Yeah, deals can be made as long as the four of us land safely. Okay. I mean, with, the wind, rushing through, with the wind rushing through your hair and the zombies all around you, it, you see no change. You detect no change in the force. Yeah, I'm yeah, gonna, totally. I'm gonna just yell again to Varel. Varel, trust me, you have to let go. Are we going to hold hands? Yes. <laughs> Good. I'm letting go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you let you let go, and all the corpses like that have, uh, you know, pieces of viscera and stuff like that that have been around you because it's been a very slobbery mess. Also, start to let go and float in this circle around you. Um, you know, a solid 30 seconds goes by as you're now down. You don't know how many floors down, but everyone's in free fall. Um, and your, your aura uh, begins to recede because it only lasts a minute, right? My aura is tied to my rage, so I, it's gone as soon as I'm Your rage lasts a minute, so your rage subsides, the aura subsides. You guys are in free fall and pitch darkness. The only people who can see anything are Hope and Stanley right now. Um, so you're in free fall and you hear. <laughs> The wind rushing past your ears, um, but you're basically blinded at this point without any sources of light. Hope, uh, Varel and um, Nash. All right, what actions would you guys like to take? I don't know what uh, hold I my hand. <laughs> if I darkness. if I concentrate, can I see at all where the numbers have been appearing? Are they still there? Uh, perception. Thirteen. So you take a you take a look just to see if you're not missing anything, and you realize you've gone past a point where now they're they're actively mining, and there are no there are no signs or no painted markers of any kind. Uh, I'm guessing we're not able to do like any air swimming. Like that, really. Like we could angle our body to fall faster or slower. I well, there are a lot of zombies. You might be able to kick off one of them. You sort of take a quick look around. You notice there's a zombie awfully close to you, and you could probably push yourself in a direction if you kick, if you kicked it and pushed yourself a certain way. It's not really close to him, though, is it? It's fairly close, but it's very difficult to reach out for the zombie to reach out and attack. It's not used to. Falling is not a, zomb a zombie's natural uh, habitat for movement. It's like I mean, that. I, I, the the wind going, is having its way with it, basically. I am going to close my eyes, 
and I'm going to use all the concentration in my in my little elven ears to try to listen for anything hitting ground and ready a reaction to as soon as I hear what sounds like something hitting the ground, cast feather fall on the bus. Okay, and um, you do have everyone within vision, so you have to wait for it, right? Yes, it's okay. Uh, but as soon as it basically, as soon as you hear something hitting ground, and you're concentrating as hard as possible, um, perception roll, please. That's a 20, not natural. Okay. All right, so Stanley, you just see Stanley, um, Hope, Hope can only see this. Uh, you see Stanley sort of take a meditative pose in the middle of the air as he scrunches his face and closes his eyes and sort of has his hands in this ready position. He's got the megaphone. Uh, he's t- With one hand, he's touching his megaphone, so you're going to need that for the material components. And he's sort of doing this Jedi thing in the air as he, as he falls still. <laughs> Meanwhile, you look over at Varel, he's just like, ah! <laughs> and you look over at Nash, and Nash is looking up at his, you know, the staff trying to find it, just like he's, he's facing, he's not facing down, he's facing up, just yeah. flailing um. about. Um, and you're there taking it all in, the observer uh, of this, and... Um, uh, it seems like an endless eternity goes by as you descend down this full minutes pass and you start to think about everyone starts to think about their past and where they've come from and what they're doing here and if this indeed would be the last time that they breathe air and experience life and that your story possibly ends here in this black pit where no one will remember you and no one will know will weep for you no one will know where to find you you'll just be like a piece of sand on the desert wind that got blown away that no one cares about or thinks about and all these things settle deep into your minds but this is the end Stanley you hear the noise just like and you hear cast it it's getting a ladder quickly. Poof. Describe your casting. As soon as I hear it, my eyes just flash open, bright, vibrant pink. I throw my hands out and uh, let the soothing energy of Featherfall envelop my friend. Okay, Hope, and as the only other person who can see what's going on, you begin to, you just suddenly, like landing on a soft pillow, you see Hope and Nash. Like landing on a soft pillow, <laughs> just like they stop moving, and the zombies they keep going. Uh, by the way, can you name all the pe- all the things that you cast your feather fall on, please? Uh, I, if he's within range, I'll cast it on Dogman. Uh, <laughs> but I'm not. Okay. I'm not particularly. <laughs> you, got, you, about you have it. enough targets for that because you've he, cast it four. What's your limit? Uh, I believe it's one for. Uh, Oh no, that's something else. Um, what is it? Up to five. So uh, me, tickles. yeah. What so a we lucky could get, boy. We could get him if he's around. Okay, you can see tickles. He's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's just enjoy a dog enjoying the air. <laughs> all right. So all, you also see tickles. Like <laughs> you also see tickles just float as if in the pillow, and you see zombie corpses. <laughs> Rain past you. You've got to like look and dodge out of the way. Everyone make a dexterity save. Oh my but. lord. Yeah, natural 20. Six. <laughs> I got a natural. I love the quick follow up of a good roll with a crap roll. Nat- natural. Six. <laughs> I got a natural 15. All right. Thir- Stanley? 13. All right. And Tickles. Yeah, he's good too. Varel, uh, you're you slow down. And you just you just feel these violent poof, poof, poof as, as things start hitting you and pushing you down further. You're still magically floating, but they're like poof, and you're sort of getting knocked around a whole bunch. Spun of, like a top. Really. <laughs> yeah, but you're just like just getting hit on the way down. Everyone else is nimbly like feeling it out. Uh, Nash, as you slow down, 
in the corp you're not paying attention to the corpses you're just getting super lucky that they're not hitting you for some reason just intuition or whatever yeah. and everyone begins to float down but corpses just endless corpses <laughs> uncountable corpses and from below you hear Was corpses like shot out of a cannon and start just pummeling, getting the ground pummeled. And then you look up and you think you see this weird shape. Make a dexterity save. Okay. This is just me? Yeah, something violent is whipping its way above you. 14. All right. And, and you just you see it here as your staff smashes you in the head. Bunk, <laughs> and it knocks you. You take four points of damage. <laughs> as, as your, staff, your staff just nails you. Yeah, thankfully not the nail side. It's just because it's not part subject to feather fall, and it just <laughs> bunks you in the face. But even and even though you're like super disoriented, you instinctively reach out and grab it with that dexterity roll, and you have the staff back in your hand. Nice. And everyone begins floating. The corpses again. <laughs> Very cold, very dank, and the stench is horrendous down here. And as things start to come into view, Hope and Stanley, you see that there must have been a water deposit already built up down here, but not very much. And the corpses, like there's some rocks jutting out from the bottom, and corpses are just nailing it. And as soon as it nails it, the corpses just integrate into just fine mist. And there's this, there's, it's a cloud, but it's a cloud comprised of particulate body matter and you guys begin descending into it and the breathing like, just imagine humidity but if the humidity was blood and it's just <laughs> minor corpses exploding off walls careening off the sides all around you and there's this lake of blood in the bottom there's nowhere safe and unclean to land and uh, you get closer and closer and closer and closer to it and everyone just is lowered into black bloody pile that is built up from hundreds of corpses in the bottom as everyone hits, it's like dropping into oil. Everyone's covered in blood, but everyone can touch ground. It doesn't go that deep, um, but you're just, now everyone's about shoulder length in this pool of blood formed from all the corpses that have fallen down. And they continue to rain down. Up, up above, you still see corpses flying down. To the right, you see a small opening where some of the water is starting, some the blood water is starting to drip into. Uh, but that's all you see down here. I'm going to dash for the opening. Okay. Well, you dash as quickly as you can in blood water, which is not fast at all. Uh, but you, you guys make your way swimming towards it. Can I get everyone to roll a dexterity check, please? Yeah. Oh, this is a swim, right? Not a reaction? It's a reaction just to dodging continued corpses being pummeled from the sky. It's, okay. it's raining corpses. It's raining, man! Oh, sorry. Uh, 11. 23. 20, not natural. Okay. Everyone swims hurriedly as the corpses continue just screening off walls and exploding, and no one wants to get hit with any of these things. Uh, Tickles as well. He's, like, paddling in the ground. <laughs> And everyone swims towards the side, clambers on up into the into the cavern, and just sits. You guys all sit in the line <sighs> on solid ground once again. And and tickles is just, just flops down <laughs> as he as he lies there. I you can still hear it. corpses <laughs> echoing throughout the hall that you're the cavernous opening that you're in. I vomit up the last of my <laughs> bitten, congealed, nasty zombie, uh, losing all of the eight temporary hit points I had sitting on me, going down to eight okay. health, fall into my knees, and just spitting for a bit. So bile and pieces of zombie course fly out on the front of your mouth, and then um, Tickles perks up, and he goes over to you, and he starts to look... <laughs> He starts licking up some of the blood that you just barfed out. <laughs> I, I uh, like... I'm going to go over to Varel and just rest a hand on his shoulder and cast Cure Wound uh, at the second level. And you are going to regain... Twelve hit points. Sweet.
Is there anything worth seeing in here? Should we just close our eyes for a little bit? You can't make out too much. Again, it's dark. There's no source of light. Uh, Hope and Stanley, you don't see much apart from, you know, the blood pool and the, the, the corpses floating down. Or not floating down, flying down and hitting walls. To the other end is a long, narrow cavern, about six feet tall, about five feet wide. You only fit one person at a time going down. And it seems to travel deeper as it slopes downward into the earth. I'll take out the lantern and press the digitate a light into it. Ah, so there's light. Can see. You see the walls are black, deep, dirt from deep, deep within the earth. Uh, a little, a, a giant like centipede, you know, just huge, just sort of scurries off as it makes its way and then enters into the rock face and disappears from view. There are a lot of little bitty bugs on the ground and on the walls. This is a deep, dark place. Hmm. Well, that was harrowing. Sorry, Everyone all right? Yes. This was the worst way to get to this floor I can think of. <laughs> it we made certainly it saved a lot of time. Yeah. Remind me when we get to the surface to kill every one of those damn dwarves. We should, uh, in a little spit, and soak their beards in oil and light them on fire so they can be oil beards and I, I, don't feel well. I raise my hand and say I second the motion. I'm with the lizard. I hate those bastards. I don't think we'll need a reminder. I think we all have a pretty good idea of what we're going to do dwarves when... Well, well, well. <laughs> we didn't hear that, but I think he said uh, we'll have a pretty good idea of what the, we're going to do the dwarves when we get back up to the surface. Yeah. Yep. Accurate. Per- perfect. Sounds like Stanley. Sounds like something he'd say. <laughs> So where are we? Does anyone have a, uh, I don't know, a sense of where we need to go? Because this is, this is dark, wet, and I don't know where we're supposed to go. I can barely see. Even that lantern's not helping me. The bottom, yes. I think the bottom of the mine. It think- seems like the passageway is the only way forward. Yeah, we're not getting back that way. Should we make camp, though, before we... Oh, we should probably... Well, actually, how you... Varel, that... How are you? How do you feel? Stanley helped immensely, but I wouldn't find at least a short breather. Also, this man-beast is eating my previous lunch. (laughs) His name is Tickles. Does he require execution? I don't think so. Tickles. Come you, say his, you say his name and he stops eating. <laughs> yeah, come here, come here, Tickles. He comes over to you. <laughs> I'll start yeah. rubbing his little head. Well, I mean, it's a metal mask. You can't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or the sides, then, I guess. Okay. His yeah. neck is exposed. Okay, yeah, yeah, a little neck scratch. Okay, and he goes. <laughs> and he smells on your leg. He smells and moves around. He looks at Varel and he walks up to Varel's crotch and he just puts his head in your crotch, Varel. He's like, <laughs> starts smelling. Uh, a normal inspection for an animal. <laughs> and then he walks over to Stanley and he goes to your crotch, Stanley, and he's like, I slap him on the head and say, Bad dog. You're bung. <laughs> it's metal. There's a metal helmet on his head. And he sort of he, he stops, he moves away, and he just kind of looks at you. Go away. Go somewhere else. You're weird. He starts sniffing the ground and he comes back over to Hope and he curls up by Hope's leg and... <laughs> Give him a little smile. <laughs> is, uh, are the walls worked or is there sand on the ground? Um, so it looks like it was uh, carved out ages ago and that some places have just formed their own like from shifting rock everything's very jagged everything's very um doesn't it's man-made but looks very like foreboding in this in this sort of evil way like almost as if by design every edge looks sharp on the rocks 
and there's a, there's a dampness to all the rocks too. Like something, there's a lot of moisture down here. Uh, I would like to do a survival check to see if anyone has walked this way or is okay. heading down the tunnel in front of us. Okay. Or has. 11, so 14. So you, you do an examination of the areas that you haven't disrupted yet with your own footsteps. And you sort of have the sense that a lot of the middle of the path is very clean where there's more dirt towards the sides. Uh, and it's not evenly spread. Uh, and it looks clean enough that, yes, there, this would have been traversed by something to disrupt, to make that kind of disruption. Something did pass through here. At a time, we are underground. There is no weather to disturb these tracks, and these could be extremely ancient. It could be new, though. Well, if we're about to fight Thailand, and we have no idea what he even is, how is everybody doing? The longer rest we can take, the better off. Agreed. A rare thing, I feel, when I talk to Stanley. But I agree. Everyone needs <laughs> to sleep. I just about lost my staff. You guys are taking a long rest? Yes. We're thinking about it. It's too soon for that. Oh. You, you wouldn't benefit from it. You just you just woke up. Remember, you were in the desert. You woke up, walked two hours, um. and spent maybe another hour with this whole adventure in the thing. Wouldn't be yeah, reasonable. but a lot's happened. We'd be really tired. Oh, a lot's happened in game time. <laughs> we're tired, perhaps. But no, no, no. I mean, our characters would be like, oh <laughs> man. Hey, you guys are exhausted, but uh, you won't be you won't gain the benefit of a long rest three hours after the rest. Okay. We gotta hit them REMs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, a short rest certainly is in order, and I will uh, begin to give myself the dirt bath with what's what sandy bits are on the bottom of this tunnel, as I'm covered in toasty viscera. Yeah. The actual rule, just so everyone's clear on it, um, the actual rule is written is that it's a 24-hour period that has to elapse before you can benefit from a long rest again. Okay. Um, you can take a long rest. You just won't get the benefits from it. Right. Okay. Yeah, there's no point in that then. So Sorry, uh, you were uh, you were making a, an action, Varel. I think I might have missed it while I was looking that up. He's doing a dirt bath. Oh. Yeah, I'm doing my dirt bath and uh, assuming we're going into a short rest. Yeah, um, short rest you can totally do. Cool. I'll pull out some of my rations and eat something. All right. Is there any foliage or any kind of anything down here? Is it just rock? It's all rock and earth. It's all rock. Yeah. Um. You, yeah, it's, it's mainly rock. There's no sand down here. No foliage. Okay. I'm going to... Not in this hallway. I'm going to slide down the side of whatever wall I'm leaning on and sit. And, and So you guys can roll your hit die. You can expend hit dice to recover hit points um, as much as you like. In fact, I think because that's an option, if you wanted to retcon that cure wounds that Stanley did, because he did it quite hastily, if you want to spend hit dice to recover your hit points instead of take the cure wounds, I'd allow it. Well, I am... I, I would let you make that decision. I know you would. <laughs> yeah, but it's up, to, it's up to Scott whether or not he wants to expend hit dice at this point. I don't, because... Uh, no, that was Varel that I did the... Oh, sorry, up to Varel. Yeah, I, that's not me. Plus, I'm actually doing pretty good. Uh, I, I mean, it'd take two, two of my three slots, so that's up to you, man, if you need your, your spell. I would much rather have the spell, but I can also give us a song of rest during this, which gives you an additional 1d6 hit points. Sure, then take dive. back your spell and, and sing us a song. Yeah, Bo, can you make John actually sing? Well, remember, he's not a bard in the traditional sense, so what he's going to do is, is orate some sort of inspiring speech. So everyone, everyone, I get the sense everyone's feeling a little dejected. That zombie fight was... Long and arduous, so maybe John has some words of wisdom to inspire his comrades. Oh, I like this. I thought maybe you meant like a rap at first, but then I, which is also cool. But I will take well, politicians first. rap, so I'd allow it. Sure. <laughs> no, we won't be doing that. Um. All right. So is that now? We're all gathering around now for me to speak. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Quit stalling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. 
my friends, I know this has been uh, an unexpected journey we've taken today, but when you really put it in perspective, we've ended up exactly where we meant to be far sooner than we intended to get here. I guess what I'm telling you is I think ultimately this has been a, a good thing. And we have vanquished more zombies than just about anybody I know. It's, uh, it's been a lot of zombies. We killed a lot of zombies. We made a river of blood out of zombies. So bully for us. And we're going to now go kill a guy we've killed before. So it's an exciting day. Here, here. <laughs> Excellent. Everyone benefits from your song of rest. Yeah, it was really uninspired. And so they only get it if they expend hit dice, right? Yeah, if they expend a hit dice. Uh, for every hit dice they expend, they get 1d6 extra to roll. Ah, oh, sweet. Yeah, so you roll extra dice per hit dice spent. Okay. Well, I need none of it. I just enjoyed it. Awesome. I'm only two health down now. Cool. Back Stanley, you rolling any hit dice? He, everyone made it out pretty to. unscathed except for Varel. Yeah, Varel took the uh, brunt, which is how it's supposed Nash to took, be. Nash took a few hits. But... Yeah, I made up for it. Stanley's yeah. five temporary things helped and all that. All right. So uh, 15 minutes or so go by, maybe an hour. You take your rest, you take your time. Everyone gets uh, their composure. Eventually, after several, uh, let's say 20 minutes, the, the, the rain of corpses exploding on the walls psh, 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 starts to let up. Mm. And silence descends upon where you are. And the kind of silence that's... Um, it's not just like oh it's quiet out and there's background sounds there is no sound it's 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 an eerie kind of quiet almost to be like in the vacuum of space and it just where nothing exists so far away from the sun and the desert that you know but it's quiet creepy i uh i nash Here's the silence. Isn't very comfortable with it. Uh, leans to the left a little and goes, just to break up the silence. <laughs> <laughs> and, and tickles the dog. Looks up and looks up at you. Uh, sorry. And I go, sorry. That was a little rough. You feeling all right, Nick? Yeah, I'm fine. Just a little one. Everything's fine. <laughs> Sorry to break the mood. <laughs> the that wasn't the only thing over. you broke, Nash. <laughs> <laughs> Tickles uh, slow, casually walks up, uh, thinking you're not paying attention, and smells your butt. Oh, great. <laughs> Get away from me, you mongrel. You're not even a dog. Anyone have an explanation for this freaking... What is this animal? What's the deal here? Why is a, a man acting like a, a dog, and why are we stuck with him? I don't know. It just didn't seem right to let him die, but... Well, I agree, but I'm now that we're... I'm gonna be honest. Yeah. He's a little odd. <laughs> well, now that we're out of danger, he's either dead weight or we need him to help. So, I, How much language does he understand? Well... Tickle, tickle. sit! Look at me, boy. Look at me. I look he at looks him. at you. Yeah, We've like... been looking back and forth at you and Stanley as you guys are talking. And I say, do you understand what I'm saying? And if you do, bark once. <laughs> and he goes, well, <laughs> shit. Oh, well, that was a bark? <laughs> do it again. If you hear, okay, now do it twice. He just looks at you and breathes. <laughs> All right, well. Maybe that... it was a coincidence. <laughs> Somebody else deal with him. I don't know what to do with him. I'm just saying he can't have my food. <clears throat> and he's just going to be dead weight. He's going to get us in trouble. He's going to have to... I don't know. I, it's, if it's like having a real dog in a human's body, this is... 
<clears throat> bad for everybody here. I say we perhaps you could you know, lead the way. Oh, yeah. maybe he can track. He can be a scouting dog. All right. Well, how are you going to get him to do that? How are you going to find out? Go scout. He looks at you, Stanley. <laughs> I don't know. Oh. He's kind of useless. He seems an affinity for yours. Perhaps you could command this creature. All right. Um, I'll walk to where the opening is, and I'll mm -hmm. pat my leg. Hey, mm -hmm. tickles. He follows you down the hallway. <laughs> On all fours, you know. Awesome. We'll get to the opening, and I'll get behind him and start walking forward and do like a, a finger forward. His eyes follow your finger, and they start sniffing the ground. Uh, can you roll a nature check, please? Or is there an animal handling in there? Do we have animal handling? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so. actually. Let's do, let's do animal handling. Uh, 19. All right. He appears to have understood your command and he begins sniffing up ahead. <laughs> and uh, he's, on all, he's on all fours and he starts moving down the hallway, sniffing on the ground. There we are. Use. I'll start following. Okay. So are we are we leaving? Yeah, we've had our rest. We should go. Can I get the party order? Tickles is in the front, obviously. I'll Oop. be behind Tickles. Okay. I'll take him the rear. Pharrell in the rear. I'll go behind Hope. Okay, so Nash and then Stanley. All right, you guys make your way single file down the hallway um, with uh, Stanley, presumably your light's still on, sort of having a look. Tickles is up ahead in the dark. You can hear, you can't see him that well, even with your dark vision. It's But it, there's a lot of corners and rounding and the, and the path slopes down. You walk for maybe five minutes down the hallway till you get to uh, a room that starts to open up. This room is maybe 30 feet in diameter. It's a small little room. Same rock surfaces and everything. It's just an open cavernous area. Now the room has a, still a low ceiling. It's about seven feet up. Varel, you, your head, oh, sorry, about 10 feet up. There's some clearance from where your head is. Um, and uh, it's the same rock surface. Doesn't appear to have any exits in it. Uh, in the center of the room, immediately visible, are corpses, skeletons that are on the ground, rotted, and they look, the bones look mangled, and crushed. Um, and and there are about four or five skeletons that are there in a very severe state of decay. Um, they're short skeletons. Uh, and they don't look like those of humans. They're maybe about four feet tall. Um, and the room has no exits that you can see. Can I, uh, I'll do a, I want to Aragorn this business, but I guess that might be medicine since they're not my type of body. So I'll do a survival check to check for tracks and see what the wounds look like. Okay. To examine, I would say medicine to examine injury. That's, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll see. Yeah. If I'll I survival kind of because it's kind of prey too. So your choice. Okay, I'll do survival, Violence. and I'm looking to put together the beast that killed what I assume is a bunch of dwarves. Okay. Uh, 21. All right. So you take a, you sort of pick up one of the bones and look at it and ex examine everything. And um, what you notice is that the bones are definitely from being shorter in stature. They match the height of the dwarf-style humanoid that you've seen. Um, and the bones appear to have been crushed by something violent and blunt and like because some of the rib cages are just really already looks like they've probably been uh grounded to dust and blown away the ribs are kind of not there and um the skull is they're like they're fractured in with little dents everything has the look like some strong force uh, stamped it into a bloody pile having done that yourself on several occasions you're familiar with uh, you know the injuries that it causes are the injuries beyond what would kill them was this you know like repeat stamping a trample kind of thing or was this a sort of mace blow that then they were laid out from um this looks like if you had to guess this was one blow and not repeated blows okay 
These dwarves were killed in battle, but the assailant seems to be of some intelligence. The killing blows were what they left with. There appears to be no feasting, anger post the kill, and of course, no resurrection at the moment. Also seems like they've been there for quite some time. That is true, too. They're not moving, are they? And I poke one with a stick. With my staff. I don't <laughs> I don't trust these. <laughs> we just got these done. They're not moving. There's a lot of undead in this place. I'm just saying. I don't want to deal with these things. So let's make sure that we're not putting ourselves in a weird position. And I poke at one. Does he move when I poke him? Nothing moves, except for the force you apply to it. Okay. This would suggest that there is either another exit, or this was done by the dwarves some time ago, while the elevator was functional, and they then killed their own men and proceeded back up. True. Well, let's see what we can find. Let's uh, scout around the room a bit. Uh, how high up is the ceiling? How tall is this? Uh, ten feet. So for you, there's about three feet of clearance between you and the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> you all right? I'm good. I was trying to sneeze quietly. But... Oh, that was you. I thought it was John. Oh, I rolled 11 perception to check the walls for anything that looks weird. Um, if you're going to check the walls, um, nothing jumps out at you when you look at them. Um, but if you want to investigate things, that'll be investigation. Oh, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Is it still super quiet? Like, we're not hearing any sounds? None of us are perceiving any sounds without special help of hearing it's something. It's de deathly quiet. Okay. It was a four. Okay. If you take a look around the room, uh, just to see if anything's amiss, uh, you don't find your search comes up empty, but you do notice if you stand in certain parts of the room, I think you feel a cool breeze uh, around your ankle, Ooh. where sort of you have a bit of skin exposed between your pant leg and your boot. Maybe not the ankle, but the calf. Yeah, I feel wind over here. And I'll point out the area. Keep in mind, just, just to set the scene a little bit, because I feel like I omitted this detail, but you were swimming in black, red blood. I don't know if people, you guys cleaned yourself up yet. Um, you all are very stained red. I took my dirt bath. I don't have much well, I can do. I, I probably would have, but now's as good a time as any to press the digitate the blood away. From everyone? Okay. Well, from oh. Hope. And myself, for sure. <laughs> Thank you, Stanley. No, uh, no love for uh, for old for old Nash. Eh? Well, I turn to you and go <laughs> and walk them forward. Keep walking. Can you find out again, Nash? You <laughs> identified <laughs> the exact you, act that made me not want to give you a press the digitation, <laughs> and you did it a second time. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm fine being covered in crap. It's fine. I'm used to it. I don't have a problem with it. I'm not here to impress anyone. I'm Nash Maggard of the Solar Mines. <laughs> now that he's made up his mind that he's okay with it, I cast it on him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Nash is clean as well, apart from the warts and tumors that cover his left yeah. side. Left side? Left, Le side. left right side, side, yeah. Left side. His right eye is good. The right side's good. Right, so but you, uh, uh, just to get back to what Hope uh, was doing, um, she was investigating, she didn't find anything, but she felt a breeze on her calves. Nash's fart. <laughs> it, was not, it was not Nash's fart. It's oh. a strange smell to it. I'm, I'm continuing to, to examine the bodies to see if I can find any sort of pattern in the, the blows and put together the story as and, to how they fell in what order. Medicine check, please. Ooh, today I know medicine. A 20. Not natural. Okay. Um, a light bulb comes on in your head as you examine these. And while you previously posited a theory that perhaps they were 
killed, um, the space that you're in wouldn't contain a being large enough to kill it in that manner, unless it was out in the hall. There's also a certain deliberateness to the corpses being left here in a room with no exits. And you wonder if it's not, you know, territorial markings as opposed to a hideaway that there's, it's it, the corpses are left here with intent. The last part of the light bulb is what had to have hit them had to be a, a being, you know, three, four times a large being or comes to mind or some kind of giant boulder. Hmm. That perhaps it, they were crushed by rock. Friends, mm. it seems that these bodies were not left or slain by their brethren. Watch here and see how a beast of great magnitude did destroy these one at a time and left them here as display. Perhaps what we seek is the entrance to a lair. Well, it's probably an opening over here. I'm going to head over where Hope indicated she felt the air moving and uh, pull off a glove and feel around to see if I can feel any breeze myself. Investigation check. 13. Okay. So you examine the part of the, the, that part of the room, the far side, on the other side of where the entrance is. And you do notice that there are these imperfect cracks in the wall, in the rock face, but they're a little too straight and not jagged like everything else that you see in sort of random, uh, in, in a random way that you feel like perhaps that there is some kind of a, there's something to this part of the, the wall. And um, you look a little bit to your right and you notice there's another similar rock face. And while you're sort of searching it, a few pebbles fall off the wall and a little little piece of the rock moves aside. But it's f- sort of firmly stuck in place. Did anybody else see this move? Did it make a sound? <laughs> no. Well, the pebbles hitting the ground made a sound. Yes. I mean, no, I don't see like you do. I have no idea. No, yeah, there's I a torch. A, or, oh, a then yes. I saw it. Is it... Can you push it? I don't push things. Varel. <laughs> we need... Yes. We need you to push it. We need you to push it real good. Very well. I shall push it real, real good. Dan, Dan, where am I Dan, 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 no, uh, Stanley, show him where you saw the movement. Maybe he can he can lizard lizard this thing open. Well, this rock seems uh, a little crumbly, uh, but I didn't touch it, so I find that a little alarming. Mm. Remember, he doesn't want to open <clears throat> things anymore because he has PTSD about this kind of thing. <laughs> Do you want to? Do you want to try Varel? You want to go give it a swing? Just feel around, see if you can figure something out. I mean, I could do it, but I don't think I have the strength you do. In case everything's yeah. frozen for me. I know. What? Did everyone freeze? Sorry, you guys were you guys were talking. I think everybody. You guys were talking, and I wasn't hearing anything. Oh, it got frozen for me. We must have frozen for a second. Can you hear us now? Yeah. Okay. I don't know what happened there. Uh, so I'll, I'll head over and uh, and place a hand, a firm hand, onto the wall where Stanley indicated. Okay. Um, so you go over there and you see where you put your hand that there's a piece of rock that can shift and move and that maybe you can open. Like sort this of maybe have a hinge. There's no wall. This is a contraption of some kind. And I'll give it a, a firm grab and a spin. Okay, uh, so <laughs> you give it a firm grab. You pulling out or spin? No, uh, giving it kind of a side twist. Okay, um, strength left. check. Strength. Fifteen. Okay, so you take grab the rock, turn it, and you feel something pull and tear like sinew, and you pull it, 
and it comes loose and then the rock's in your hand and then it sort of reveals that there were uh, as a hinge mechanism bolted into it and then bolted to the other side which is clearly has like a opening this way but you just took the covering and twisted it off into your hand oh. and broke it <laughs> uh what you what it reveals is that actually you see this lever and there's a there's a sha- there's a sort of a, a cut a, a vertical cut in the wall with a shaft coming out of it like a drive stick um, and there's a ball with and it's shaped in the skull it has like these little these little rubies in the eyes this is beyond my expertise that we have exposed the mechanism well, I hope you want to take a look at it, see if you can figure it out. Yeah, that sounds great. Uh, I'll roll a investigate of seven. Okay, you take a look at the le- lever. Now, this lever, I mean, obviously, if you switch it, it'll switch something on. You've seen a lot of levers like this in the vehicles that are there. You sort of examine beyond it, and, and it's... There's a little bit of resistance, and it's and it's as you sort of play with it before fully opening it, you just sort of feel it. It feels a little loose, a little bit of resistance, so you know that it's it's going to be when it shifts, you're going to be turning some unseen gears, probably somewhere embedded behind the rock face. Well, it seems when I pull this, something's going to happen behind the rock. I'm not sure what it is. It could have been what killed these dwarves. It could open the door. No, these dwarves were crushed by some sort of great beast of size. This door is either its home or its ancient lair, but the state of the corpses suggests that if it was living, it's long gone, and if somehow magical or constructed, it'll remain behind the wall. So perhaps positions are in order before we open the shaft we gotta open it like what other choices do we have there's nothing else we have to so yeah let's pick position varel you're first <laughs> all right i will take position behind uh hope so that if she were to jump out of the way whatever is in the hall would be facing me okay got it nash um to wait are you asking me what position I want to be in? Yeah. Okay, then I want to be... The, the room is just a circular room, about 30 feet wide, ceiling 10 foot. Um, and the hallway where you came from. Okay. Um, no discernible exits. The switch you found is on the opposite side of the hallway you came in from. So we're not necessarily lining up in a line in front of it. We can, we can be around it, right? Like, mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I just want to be up behind Varel... It's like if something opens up, I want him to take the hit points. Okay, so you guys are all up against the wall on the opposite side of the room. Yeah, Stanley, where do you stand? Um, I'll be alongside the wall. Uh, In the same know, on place. The side. Okay. Yeah, alongside by the door. What okay. what we assume is a door. So uh, Tickle sees you guys all moving into that area, and he just sort of sits in the middle of the room. You know, his la- his hands out, and then but his knees crossed in right like he's sitting like his knees bent i guess right but with his arms fully out, like a dog sits you know and um he's just sort of looking in your direction going he cocks his head a little bit and it's like <laughs> cocking his head at you okay i'll tap my leg to get him to come over <laughs> i don't want him sitting in the middle of the room doesn't appear to want to come over animal handling check Oh, dear. Oh, yeah, 18. Okay. That's so good. you slap even harder. And then he he makes his way towards you, and he, he takes that sitting position, but down by your leg. All right, I'll give him a little tap on the metal head. I'll boom, look boom, at boom. everyone, making eye contact with each, each member of the party. I'll give a little nod. Everyone's ready? Take yeah. a position. To catch whatever comes out the door if yeah. it charges. Okay. All right. I reach in and I pull the lever. So you go to pull it. It's a little stuck. It seems a little stuck. And you start to move it. Ding, 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 ding. Roll strength check. Unless you want to stop. No. No, I don't want to stop. Uh, the 12. I put my legs up on the wall. They're one leg up and I start. Okay. Uh, you put one leg up and you start pushing it up. 
and then it finally goes crunk, and the loud noise instantly, whoosh, and uh, the ceiling starts falling in on you. All these rocks start dropping in on your head. Everyone Rock. make a dexterity check. Oh, Lord. Uh, 14 for me. 17 for mm -hmm. Scott. Four. 20, not natural. Okay, um, and Tickles, uh, what is it? Okay, um, so who rolled under uh, 15? I, I did. did. Okay. Uh, one sec, sorry. So everyone makes their beelines for the exit. Um, Hope and Stanley are the quickest to move across, instantly reacting to, to the to the rocks. Uh, but Nash and Stanley, rocks, uh, big heavy pieces of rock nail you in the head and nail you, pin you underneath the ground. Uh, Pharrell, you take 20 points of damage. Oh, oh my um, gosh. Nash, uh, 12. 12? Okay. And you're pinned, you're both pinned under heavy rock as a pile of rocks just <clears throat> descends, drops down, and now they're in the center of the room. You, you can edge around, but for the most part, the room is filled with rocks. Sorry, you have to climb over rocks. You can still see towards the other side, but there are rocks on the ground, and um, you're both buried underneath it. So oh, wait, how much, how much damage did I take? Yeah, you and Hope took none. You made it across, unless... You rolled I over rolled, 15. I rolled 14. Oh, no, you're in there, too. Uh, Wait, so Nash okay. made it, right? No, it was only Hope that made it, actually. Oh. Um, yeah, so uh, you take uh, 15 points of damage. And as well, uh, Tickles is also crushed under there. Um, and you just hear, ah, ah, and, and he's been crushed under a rock, and you kind of see his limbs, but they're not really moving. And so you see all of them just pile. The pile of rock fell on the entire party. And they're all crushed under a rock right now, and they can't move. And you're the only one that made it out. As you look back in horror, as to what's happened. Good. Well, who's and the look, closest? See, you look. You look at, at, at Varel, and so the, the energy has been taken out of his eyes a bit, and you see a little bit of blood sort of seeping out from the rock. Um, he's the closest. And uh, as we enroach, uh, encroach the end of our show. We'll have to find out the fate of our party on the next episode. Oh, see, <laughs> I knew you were doing that. It's just a man do it on purpose. You guys, <laughs> you guys sprung the rock trap. That's on you. <laughs> so but it's a good place to end. points. Look yeah. what I've been through today. Yeah, no kidding. Well, who puts in a hidden lever that's designed to put rocks on top of? It? <laughs> I don't know. It's like maybe there's a switch that you gotta swing first. <laughs> Just saying, this is a poor design decision. I don't respect dwarven craftsmen. Everything that the dwarves have done with this mine is suspect. They Maybe suck. You didn't fully investigate all the wall and find all the switches that are in the wall. I can't wait to kill them all. I'm gonna murder all of them when I get out of here. <laughs> Just saying, maybe, maybe there was other parts of this mechanism. I maybe you didn't need to roll. Yeah, I'm you didn't a... need to roll so low when you're investigating. I will the destroy crap. them. Killed the elevator, and now we're gonna kill the wall, and mm -hmm. we'll be back for the rest of the furniture later. That's right. <laughs> That's exactly right. It's uh, a good attitude. I love it. Well, there you go. Be here next week for the exciting next phase, and the adventurers, as we find out how to get out the how the hell we get out of this uh, water wall uh, dirt this uh, rock. Sorry, this landslide. No, what is it? A, a cave in. That's the job ahead Rolling of us. rock trap. Yes. How do we get out of the rock trap? Who will survive? Probably all of us, but who will take it the worst? So far, Varel seems like a, a Mr. Hit Point fluctuation today. More on that next week on There Will Be Dungeons at therewillbedungeons.com if you're looking for the website. Uh, we got all kinds of cool stuff there. I'm going to post up that video Bo did of uh, all the fan art that has been submitted. It's super great. Uh, we'll make more of that sort of thing as more of that stuff rolls in. If you've done your own fan art for the show, head on over to the site and contact us. Let us know. Link us and uh, let us see it. We want to collect all that stuff. We'd love it. Uh, you can do that at therewillbedungeons.com. Just click the contact link. And I think that's everything. Do you guys have anything else before we go? We good? Mm, no, but except I wish everyone... A wonderful Father's Day. Oh, happy Father's Day, everybody. Oh, yeah. yeah. Happy Father's Day. Yeah, except Nash Maggard of the Solar Mines who never knew his father. All right.
that's going to do it for the show. Thank you all for being here. We'll be back next week for me, for Bo, for Kyle, for Kristen, and for John. We'll see you next time. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Frog Pants Network. Get more shows like this at frogpants.com. Yeah.